Hello, it is Tuesday, March 8th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. And welcome back to myself, to my normal environment, I suppose. There may be a bit of background noise, I apologize. If so, it shouldn't be too bad, I don't think, though. And today, I would like to thank Henrik Koskinen, Resmi, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster for bringing us this edition of The Daily Solve. So thank you to the three of them, benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign. If you'd like to join their ranks as benefactors and get access to um, this daily recognition as well as the uh, Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And of course, if you are a patron at any level, you get access to the um, all of the bonus solves that are up on the Patreon channel. And actually, I suppose maybe uh, if I can find some more time today, I will solve the next, actually the first full um, puzzle in the Boss Words Spring Themeless competition. Although actually, I think I may wait to release it until uh, the weekend because they do request not not uh, sharing any spoilers while the puzzle is still in its solve period, I suppose. Um, anyway, if you're a patron, you can you can um, uh, already watch two uh, videos from that Boss Words Spring Themeless competition, the um, practice puzzle and the preseason puzzle. So enjoy that if you're on there. All right. So uh, let's see. Let's solve today's puzzle. This is a Tuesday crossword uh, by Mary Lou Guizzo. I do recognize Mary Lou Guizzo's name. She has done, uh, she's responsible for several dozen New York Times puzzles. And I know I've solved some of hers before. I can't remember when that would have been most recently. It's a Tuesday puzzle, so shouldn't be too challenging, but it will be it will be themed. Sorry, there seems to be quite a lot of noise. I said it wouldn't be too bad, and it appears to be getting more aggressive, so I apologize. But uh, hopefully we can we can all cope. I didn't want to wait too much longer to record this because it's already getting late in the day. Anyway, let's go. I'm ready to get started. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. I seem to have the old... On this computer, I have the old start screen. I don't know what that means. <laughs> on my laptop, I seem to have a different one. I don't know. I don't know what governs that. Anyway... Bacall's partner in a classic Hollywood romance informally. So this is Lauren Bacall, the classic Hollywood star, and presumably this is Bogey, um, uh, Humphrey Bogart, her uh, husband and also frequent on-screen co-star. Uh, forbid could be to bar, to forbid something. Poet Amanda Gorman's uh, presumably ode to our ocean, Amanda Gorman, um, uh, poet laureate, right? And uh, in the U.S., that is. And toothpaste type could be gel. You could have gel toothpaste. Imagine that. Imagine that. Oh, so this is in quotation marks. So this is going to be presumably another exclamation. Imagine that. Um, I mean, it could be something like "I'll say." That doesn't fit, but I but I could see that being. Um, being a plausible answer. Here we have Easy On Me, Singer 2021. I assume, based on the fill, this is Adele. I don't know the song, unfortunately. I'm not very familiar with Adele's work, but I strongly suspect that is the answer. Here we have 1966 Swedish literature nobelist who wrote about the struggles, struggles I'm sorry, of the Jewish people. Sorry about that. Just a brief interruption. Back to the solve. Uh, let's see. Where was I? Imagine that. Oh, I was on this. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure offhand. Let's check. Let's keep checking some crosses here. Pooh's down in the dumps, friend. That would be Eeyore, presumably. And what about this? Feathery neckwear could be a boa, a feather boa. Oh, I'll be, of course, is the answer. I should have should have gotten that more quickly. Oh, you know what? I suspect this is Nelly. And forbid could be ban. I mean, bar, I think, is is a reasonable choice. Ban is is probably a better and more direct choice for forbid. Boy, it is noisy around here today. <laughs> there was the doorbell. Um, mythical goat men could be uh, satyrs. And, oh, look at this. 1988 American Nobelist in physiology or medicine who helped develop the first drug used to fight rejection and organ transplants. I wonder if this is, this may well be, the theme, I suspect, may relate to International Women's Day, which is today. And 
I sort of suspect that's what's going on. Um, Gertrude, perhaps? Uh, yes, that does seem right. Here we have Blank Pichu Peru, Machu Picchu Peru, and Apple Pick. Could be an iMac, Apple, the Apple computer, the company. And the question mark indicates a bit of a pun or wordplay. So here, obviously, that's around Apple. And rather than it being uh, the fruit that one picks, we're referring to a, a product from the company, Apple Computer. So one in a million. And what about this? Sap-sucking buds. Aphids, I would think. And here we have Wine Valley in California. That's Napa Valley, California, in Northern California, north of San Francisco. This looks like Nellie Sachs. And here we have levels of social status in India, which are castes, um, social castes. So that looks correct. Successful singer or producer of popular music. Um, for some reason, I can't, I'm not certain if this is referring to a particular person. I suppose not. If it were at one person, it would say successful singer and producer, I think. So this is a generic reference. What does that mean? Or maybe it's the member of a group? Uh, I feel as though I should be able to get that, but I'm not immediately seeing it. Here we have old Atlas initials. Oh, it could be SSR, Soviet Socialist Republic, which is um, initials that are now outdated as they, um, those countries are no, no longer have that uh, suffix. Big Pharma Company. Um, Purdue? That doesn't fit, I don't think. Oh, I'm sure this is very obvious, but I can't think of it immediately. Oh, it could actually be an abbreviation now that I think about it, because pharma is abbreviated from pharmacological, so or pharmaceutical, I guess, more, more accurately. So it's probably a nickname for a company or an abbreviated form. Like farm country, um, arable or rural is probably better. So let's check the crosses here. Races as an engine, you could rev an engine, you could... Uh, if it's an internal combustion anyway, you could, um, you know, depress the accelerator in neutral and rev it. Fathom or foot, each of those is a unit, and this is an or clue, so it will be a singular answer, not plural. If one was a passenger, one rode. And let's check the crosses here. Mushroom and miso soup, you could have a, a, an enoki mushroom. I think it, that's a Japanese soup mushroom. And a YouTube upload, well, I know, as I know very well. And as do you, I suppose, if you're watching this, that's a video. The back of a ship is its stern. Oh, uh, right. So American Nobelist in physiology or medicine who helped develop the first drug used to fight rejection and organ transplants. I wish I knew this right offhand, but unfortunately I don't, which is a shame. Oh, I spelled Machu Picchu wrong. Whoops, I forgot the H. That was silly. I think I, I, think I saw the double C in Picchu and just kind of without thinking, went ahead and reproduced it. So this would have been much more obvious if I didn't make that fairly obvious mistake. And it's a hit maker, a successful singer or producer of popular music. That makes sense. Big Pharma Company. I'm sure this should be very apparent. And yet, oh, Merck. Merck. Is that right? That sounds right to me. I'll need to check the crosses. A bit roll could be a cameo in a film, a brief appearance, a la carte, um, sort of an individual item on, or ordering items individually on a menu rather than as a set. Some fiercely protective bears could be mama bears, mamas in this case. Oklahoma City named for a Camelot woman. Well, Enid is from Arthurian myth, so I wonder if that's a city in Oklahoma. I suspect so. I think that's familiar to me. And in the thick of would be amid. Better's chances could be odds. You could play the odds. And commercials are ads. Ah, here's another one of these. Um, 2018. So, okay, so these really are. So I think actually, despite obviously being a woman, I don't think Adele is part of the theme because my suspicion is that the theme specifically relates to women Nobel laureates in particular. So we have... Nellie Sachs, Gutrude Elian, and um, this person, a 2018 Canadian physics Nobelist 
who helped implement chirped pulse amplification. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I don't even know what chirped pulse amplification is. Wow. All right. Knight's title could be Sir. Oops. Research money could be a grant. I'm sure many of these people obtained grants over the course of their Nobel winning careers. To lease out is to rent a, a flat, say. Center of a hurricane is an I. A bio class subject is RNA. Keeps coming up recently, and it's been obviously in the news a great deal over recent years. Tehran's country would be Iran. And the opposite of South by Southwest, this is always a bit of a gimme when we get one of these this directly. The opposite of that is, of course, North by Northeast. One of nine on a nonagon. So a nonagon would be a nine sided polygon. So one of them is one side. Um, this looks like Donna Strickland to me. How about that? And a hot one makes a good impression. So a hot iron would, um, you could sear something with a hot iron, and I suppose that's used to brand cattle, for instance, and it would make an impression. A computer command, uh, enter, you could enter data on a computer. Rainbow shape is an arc, of course. A rank below captain must be a corporal, I would think, based on the fill, the, the cross. A pastoral, oh no, no, it's not, it isn't. A pastoral po poem, I would think, would be in idyll, as in idyllic, the same root. Um, so what is this? Rank below captain. Is that not what this is? Uh, I mean, that is a term for a pastoral poem. It certainly is a valid answer, but maybe not the correct one in this particular case. Uh, so maybe not a valid answer, but certainly a valid synonym. Uh, maybe it is that I'm just... I don't know very much about military ranks, to be honest, so it's possible I'm just I'm just missing something there instead. Anyway, I'll leave a blank for now. Royal Caribbean trip. So the Royal Caribbean is, I think, a cruise line, so that's probably the answer, cruise. So... All right, so what is this? Oh, CDR commander. Is commander below captain? I mean, I'd be just as prepared to accept that. So that means I can fill this back in. That looks that looks fine. And then a casual a casual affirmative could be yup. This is all looking this is all looking good, I think. What about this fast food chain with a cowboy hat logo? Arby's. Arby's. Not um There's some kind of urban myth about this relating to beef or something, but I think it actually is a phonetic pronunciation of RB for something brothers who founded the chain, I believe. Group that welcomed girl cubs in 2018. Is it the Boy Scouts of America? I don't know. I'm just guessing based on the context clues of the clue, so to speak. Um, like marshes. I'm not sure offhand. Presumably this means the biome, the sort of environment marsh. Uh, sedged? I don't think that's right. Military aviation wing. Um, Air Force, that obviously doesn't fit. Package, could be a parcel. But let's check the crosses because I'm not... It could be other things probably as well. Allowed by law could be legal. Actually, that's looking good. Cleaning cloth could be a rag. Journalist Ida B. Wells. Sushi sushi, uh, sushi fish, I'm sorry, could be an eel. Eel is a fish used in, in sushi. To get around something could be to evade it. Sometimes I have to evade certain clues until I have enough crosses to tackle them. Pale purple could be mauve, right? And a 1911 Polish and French chemistry Nobelist who pioneered research in radioactivity. Well, at least I, this is one I could have gotten without any crosses. Marie Curie. I mean, I probably should know more of these people, but uh, but unfortunately, I suppose Nobelists, modern day Nobelists, probably aren't as not the household names they probably deserve to be. Okay, the monkeys. I'm a believer is a classic song from the monkeys. Like marshes. Um, still not seeing it. Military aviation wing. I'm not seeing that either. Japanese box lunch could be a bento, bento box. Um, we have some short answers here. Bygone GM car. 
I think there's an old General Motors mark called Opal. Is that right? I think it might be, but I, I'm going to definitely need to check the crosses there first. Message sent with a click. Um, an email, maybe? Maybe I should delete delete this for now. Satisfied for now with over. Tided over? Bygone Russian rulers. Those, those are czars. I mean, it could be spelled C-Z-A-R-S, but more properly this way, I believe. What about this? Level. Could be a tier of a cake, for instance. You could have a tiered cake. Nothing could be nada. Does that help now? Message sent with a click email. Okay. And a bygone, oh, an Oldsmobile. Right. So what is an Opal? Is Opal a current? Maybe it has nothing to do with General Motors. Don't remember. I think that's actually a European car manufacturer anyway. So I was probably on the wrong track entirely. Anyway, satisfied for now with over. So I tied it over may well be correct, actually. You could eat just a little bit to tide you over until, until supper time. A diplomatic envoy could be an emissary. This looks like Betty Williams, perhaps. 1976 Peace, Peace Nobelist from Northern Ireland who co-founded Community of Peace People. I think it is Betty Williams. Oh, yeah, actually, that looks good here. Marshes are swampy. Military aviation wing. Air... Why do I not see what this is? Air arm? It seems like it should be very obvious. Line of a song, of course, is a lyric. Uh, the locale... Air... Hmm. Locale spelled out in a village people song is, of course, YMCA. And if one is straight-laced, one is prim. So this is air arm. Suppose the... An arm of the military. I, I just don't know the phrase air arm, I have to admit, used in that way. But what does this work? No, it doesn't. I've done something wrong yet again. I've had ter a terrible record this week, I must say. Um, oh, I just misspelled prim. I'm sorry. <laughs> How did I do that? Okay, there we have it. So let's let's review our um, Nobel winning... Uh, well, I guess I was going to say scientists, but they're not. They're, they're won all sorts of um, different awards. So here, uh, Nellie Sachs is a 1966 Swedish literary literature Nobelist who wrote about the struggles of the Jewish people. Gertrude, Gertrude Elian is a 1988 American Nobelist in physiology or medicine who helped develop the first drug used to fight rejection in organ transplants. 2018 Canadian physics Nobelist who helped implement chirped pulse amplification. Very curious about what that is. Uh, Betty Williams is a 1976 Peace Nobelist from Northern Ireland who co-founded Community of Peace People. And 19, uh, Mar uh, Marie Curie is a 1911 Polish French chemistry Nobelist who pioneered research in radioactivity. So a very good apropos theme from Mary Lou Guizzo. And I think I think that um, we've had some some puzzles recently that I think had to maybe stray a bit outside their um, daily difficulty um, range in order to accommodate a theme that needed to launch on a particular day. I think despite the fact that probably most people are going to, going to need to get some of these with crosses, I think, the, I mean, I certainly did. Um, I think this puzzle does a pretty good job at staying generally around Tuesday difficulty. Maybe it's a, maybe a touch above Tuesday just because of all the proper nouns. Proper nouns are always more difficult. And in addition to those, we also had Bogey, Adele, Eeyore, um, actually, yeah, so quite a few proper nouns throughout this puzzle, but, but I do think pretty, um, oh, Napa, I suppose is a proper noun as well. And Machu, Machu people, right. So extremely actually proper noun heavy. So some, some people do really struggle with that. Understandably. Let me know how you fared with this one. Um, I thought it solved pretty smoothly despite all the proper nouns, but, um, by their very nature, they do strike people differently. So I think, uh, but I enjoyed it. And Definitely learned some names that I probably should have known already, but um, I'm going to look up after this. All right. So actually, I don't <laughs> I don't think there were any. I was going to say, we'll discuss the clues from yesterday's puzzle. I don't think there were any corrections or elaborations from yesterday's puzzle. I did misspell the, um, the name of the video. I think I misspelled arbitrary as arbitrary, and uh, someone did. Someone did 
call me out on that, Rao Cal. So I guess that was about it. But <laughs> I didn't see anything else that needed um, a correction to be um, issued. So I think that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed this video, if you enjoy this series generally. If you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. And please do subscribe. If you think you know somebody who might enjoy it, pass it along to them as well. I'd appreciate that. Those subscriptions and word of mouth are really the only tools available to me to help spread this channel and, and make it grow. So thank you to everybody who's done either of those. And of course, thank you so much to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at, at any point for any, uh, at any level. Very much appreciate that direct support as well. So thank you. All right. I'll be back tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle, of course, a little bit of a step up in difficulty perhaps. And I hope you join me. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.